In this Revit tutorial, I want to cover the basics of how you use the options menu in Revit. So to find that, I'm going to go up to the blue R, the application button, and then look down at the bottom of the application menu right next to the exit Revit button. So I'll click on options and it brings up the options menu. If you look to the left, you'll see that there's a variety of headings, including general, user interface, graphics, and so on. Whichever one of these is blue will be the active menu you see here on the right. Under the general heading, you'll see there's a few different options, including notifications, username, and so on. The most important one here really is notifications. The options menu um, is similar to the options menu in AutoCAD, but far less ex extensive. And one of the, the main things you'll see here will be the save reminder interval. It's very much like the automatic save in AutoCAD. The difference here is that you'll see it says save reminder, not automatic save. Revit doesn't automatically save for you, but it will give you a inconvenient reminder to do it. And it literally is inconvenient. Revit waits till your in the middle of some command or something like that to kind of bug you and make sure that you do it. It defaults at this inconvenient reminder here. Uh, at every 30 minutes, you can reduce it to 15 or even none, or spread them out from one per hour or two or so on. Um, I would recommend definitely having the save reminder on uh, how often is up to you because it does get to be a little frustrating having that popping up all the time. I think 30 minutes is probably reasonable, maybe once an hour, um, but you'd be surprised how you can forget to save and if something happens, that's, that's a pretty big bummer. The synchronize with central reminder interval is for those of you that are working in a work share environment where you're actually synchronizing back to a central file on a server and then refreshing on your screen. So it's the same idea, uh, but just a slightly different application. You can put your username in here and then um, how often your files are cleaned up and things like that. Okay, so the real important one here is the notification and probably your name. Next, we have the user interface. And the big thing I'm going to point out here is kind of in the middle. Uh, the active theme, you can switch between light and dark just like you can in AutoCAD. Um, I happen to be in the light theme right now. If I were to change it to dark, you'll see that um, my ribbon tabs, my quick access toolbar, title bar, and so on actually change color a little bit, but it's a pretty minor difference. We also have keyboard shortcuts right below that. If I click on Customize, you'll see that the Command, Default, Shortcut, and Path are um, all listed here. So if I scroll down, you'll see that there's a lot of commands, but definitely not a lot of shortcuts. Unlike AutoCAD that has many, many shortcuts, um, Revit has relatively few. You have the option of actually typing in your own keyboard shortcuts and customizing this if you'd like to. So for example, modify is MD if you'd like to change that to just M or MY or something like that. That is something that you can actually do. I'm just going to hit cancel. We also have the options to customize how the double click behavior works. If I click on that, you'll see that, for example, if I double click on a family member, a door, a window, something like that, what will happen here under the action column is that it will take me into the family editor. Um, if I double click on a group, it will let me edit that group. Um, these are the standard uh, behaviors. I think they work pretty well, but especially if things like the family edit family can be somewhat frustrating if you're just learning the software and it keeps taking you to the family editor. So I just want you to be aware that that is something you can change. Below that we have the tooltip assistance and right now mine is set to normal. What is that really talking about? Well, if I just hit OK for a second to get out of that menu or I could hit cancel, either would work. What that's talking about is if I, let's say, go to the architecture tab and hover over wall, for example, I get a small and then large tool tip. Okay, so the small one is just giving you basic um, 
idea of what the command is, what the shortcut is, and what it does. As it expands out, it will give me, in this case, a, um, a drawing of what that tool looks like. In some cases, if I go to modify, for example, uh, and I hover over maybe the align tool, it will actually give you the small and then a video um, indicating exactly how this tool works. If I go to copy, um, there'll be a short video on you know the basic process uh, that you go through. So you can either have a set to none, minimal, normal, or high where it's just the big video. So you have a lot of options there. I suggest keeping these on when you first start using the software, but after a while they can probably get a little bit frustrating. I'm just going to go back to options for just a moment. So that was under user interface and tooltip. So none, minimal, normal, and high. Uh, you also see whether or not you want to enable recent files. If that's not something you want, you can turn that off. Should it ever disappear, here's where you can go and turn that back on. We also have the tab switching behavior. So after you've cleared a selection or finished what you want to do, what happens? In this case, it's set to return to previous tab, um, but you could have it say on the modify tab, for example. So right now, if you're just learning the software, that might not mean a lot to you, but um, as you start getting into Revit and using it a little bit more, it's good to know that you can come back and change these behaviors if they're not quite doing what you like. We can go into graphics, we can change um, the graphics mode, and some things like the colors and the size and behavior of temporary dimensions, for example. Once again, that will mean a little bit more to you uh, later. The file location shows us the file paths and what our default paths are, so this is very important. We can check rendering, where our rendering appearance paths are and our network address if we're going to be um, doing a lot of rendering and that type of thing. Uh, our spell check behavior. Um, how the steering wheel behaves, that's something we'll be getting into um, when we start looking at 3D views. Um, how the walk tool behaves, zoom and orbit. If we can see the view cube and how its behavior works, and so on. So there's actually quite a bit in here that you can change. And um, just remember, if the user interface isn't quite working how you like it, or if you switch from uh, one machine to another and things aren't, aren't quite working how you're used to, there's a pretty good chance that you can just go into options and make that simple change.